everybody, and welcome to the end of season WTF1 Awards. My name is Matthew Gallagher, and my co host for this evening, who did not get the dress code, is Tom Bellingham, the WTF1 founder. And I really hope there's some kind of awards music overlaid on that intro. Otherwise, that is going to fall very flat. But Tom <laughs> Bellingham, welcome along, my friend. I'm hoping you're a few drinks Hello. deep already into this WTF1 award show. You'd think so, considering you're wearing Alpine merch. But let's just... Let's let's give people... Well, audio listeners won't hear it. Hear it? See it? They will hear it. But they can't see you right now. What are you wearing? No. I've got a lovely... Alpine hat on, which still has a sticker on, and it and it's for Alonso and Doc on, so you can't say that I'm a Alonso fanboy because you know representing both. And I've got an Alpine T-shirt on, which is made by Lecoq Sportif. Oh, Le um, Sportif. And yes, okay, perfect. Oui. <laughs> and for audio listeners, I am wearing a full suit, absolutely not wearing shorts below where the camera can see and also wearing a WTF1 beanie for that branding. You know what I'm saying. So anyway, welcome along to the WTF1 awards ceremony. We are going to be crowning some winners here today. Seven, in fact, seven award winners. I've gone for a very like award winning show voice. I hope Tommy, you can maybe announce one or two as well uh, today and give it, give yeah. it your, give it your best not? shot. We haven't actually explained why you're wearing what you're wearing. So you firstly need why to apologize. Why I'm in my sporty chicken top. Yeah. Can we, can we apologize? Can we get that out of the way? So the start of the year, I very boldly, and I would say confidently, I watched it back. I was very confident about it. I confidently said that no team other than Red Bull, Mercedes, Ferrari, and McLaren, which was the top four last year, would break into the top four. And I said, there's no way that's going to happen. And if a team does, I will buy their merchandise and apologize to them on the end of year podcast. So this is my apology to Alpine. I'm sorry. Well done, guys. Enjoy the money. <laughs> Fair play to Alpine. They did a great, did a great job. Seven award winners, <laughs> as I say today, uh, to be crowned. So the first one we're going to get, we're going to, we're going to dive straight into it. Let's the first it. one we're starting with race of the year. The nominees are Saudi, Silverstone, USA, and Brazil. Uh, and in fourth place okay. from these nominations was Saudi with 9%. In third, we had the USA with 12%. And that means in second place, very close this, is Brazil with 38%. Which means the winner of Race of the Year goes... To Silverstone, 41%. You've put in the podcast sheet. Are we not going to talk about the races? We're going to talk <laughs> so about the just, races now. So you're just going to fly through them. And no, like, we're not. This isn't like a 10 be a very good video. podcast. You know, this is a podcast where we'll now break it down and go, do, well, firstly, do we agree? Do we think that Silverstone was race of the year? Ooh, yes. Or were you a, a Brazil voter? I think for me, when we're looking at race of the year, this is particularly the Sunday occasion brazil was definitely we race weekend of the year by an absolute country mile but silverstone oh, yeah, definitely putting my leclerc bias aside i probably would have voted silverstone just for the jeopardy the drama a first time winner you had everything brazil was a superb race weekend the race was great as well maybe some moments in the middle that weren't particularly great but silverstone for me was just drama all the way through like you you almost forget that Max Verstappen came through the field got into the lead then had his puncture dropped all the way back you only really think about the end with all the battling between Leclerc Hamilton and Perez which was some of the best racing I've ever seen and some people you know have argued that oh it's not particularly fair they're all pushing each other off and going off I've been dreaming of racing like that for ages where it's just like IndyCar and you just let them do whatever the hell they want drive off the track push each other off swap positions and let it all sort itself out and it was absolutely incredible and uh for me that's why i think silverstone beats brazil in terms of just the best race because that racing was superb and yeah like you say you, you had science as a first time win as well which was a great story even if it was a unusual victory where he sort of got handed it to him at the end on great tires but you know had to make the move and the camera didn't even know where to look did it at the end because you you had uh hamilton 
trying to get through the field on Perez and I think it was Alonso and Norris were on the back of them as well. That amazing battle of second. And then Sainz was like battling with Leclerc and should he stay behind him? Should he protect the lead? You didn't know what was going to happen. It was just awesome. And the Joe cra- the crash that someone just yeah. mentioned in the chat. You almost forget about that as well because there was just so much going on. And obviously that is a, a miracle that he was fine after the roll hoop failing and thankfully the halo did its job just what what an insane race okay (laughs) race of the year done congratulations to silverstone we now move on to our second award it is tweet of the year the nominees are hamilton with imagine response to nelson pk's comments piastri shunning alping marcus erickson's silly season prediction and Haas bantering Ryan Eyre. In fourth position, Ericsson with 3% of the vote. Oh, little, oh. little pitter-patter of applause for that one, I think. In third place, Haas and Ryan Eyre with 9%. Hamilton Imagine gets runner-up spot with 24%, which means the winner of Tweet of the Year goes to Piastri Shunning Alpine. There is no tweet in the world that would top that what a moment i don't think oscar piastri had in his mind that he wanted to win the wtf one end of season award when he tweeted it but he must have known this is going to break the internet and it was such a crucial time for us because we had nothing going on it was a summer break wasn't it and we just kind of got into the oh we've not got any f1 news boom oscar piastri no i'm not driving for alpine i've not signed anything and i won't be driving for them In 2023, my goodness me. I mean, to be honest, unbelievable PR stunt for Oscar Piastri there as well. Like, his name was everywhere. I I can't remember. We we spoke about it at the time because I've just gone back on the tweet. And I'm pretty sure he only had about 100,000 followers at this point, maybe even less. I think it was less. Um, Less. uh, And the tweet got 30, uh, sorry, 386,000 likes, nearly 100,000 retweets. Oscar Piastri, like you say, he wasn't really that well well known at the time. And boy, did he suddenly, was he well known after that that tweet? I mean, if you think of F1 Twitter, I think this will be remembered for years. We'll be looking back on this at ten in 10 years time being like, do you remember when Piastri <laughs> did just exploded the whole of F1 Twitter? Unbelievable. What what a moment. It, ha- it had to be Piastri. It couldn't have been anything else, and the vote reflects that. What a way to, <laughs> a way to start your F1 career as well. Yep, everyone knows your name, that's for sure. Uh, mm. So well done, Oscar Piastri. You win Tweet of the Year. Okay, we now move on to our third award. And it is the Social Media Teams Championship. Now, if you watch the Internet's Best Reactions, you'll know. If you follow us on social media, you probably would have seen who uh, was the winner. So in third place was Alping with 13 points. In second place, it was Mercedes with 24 points. And the winners of the Social Media Team Championship once again... A Haas F1 with 34 points. It wasn't even close. They ran away with this championship. And as much as, you know, we sometimes do double points for the last race and all that good stuff, they'd already wrapped it up. It was done and dusted. They just posted banter after banter and Gunter Steiner ships and Kevin Magnussen on pole. And they just had everything uh, work out for them this year. And and they are definitely the funniest, I would say, uh, social media outfit on the grid yeah and fair play to them that they carried on winning despite the fact that they weren't because a lot of the the banter from the year before was them sort of like self-owning themselves because they were the worst team on the grid now they're not that but they still brought the band so fair play to them incredible scene so well on has you won the social media teams championship for a second year we now move on to our next award which is most controversial moment. Now, the nominees are vehicle on track in Japan, Verstappen title confusion in Japan, Red Bull cost cap breach, and Verstappen versus Perez team orders in Brazil. A lot of Verstappen in there, a lot of Japan in there as well. In fourth position, we have the title confusion with 8% of the vote. In third place, team orders in Brazil 
with 16% of the vote. Red Bull cost cap breach with 33%, which means the winners of the most controversial moment of the 2022 F1 season is the vehicle on track in Japan. Ouch, yeah. 43% of the vote, 10% clear of uh, the Red Bull cost cap breach. It's interesting. It's it's how you kind of measure what a controversial moment is. I guess from the sporting personality drivers clashing side, I would have voted the Verstappen Perez team orders in Brazil because that that caused an absolute meltdown of discussion and chat about that all. But when you look at, I guess, controversy in the sense of the FIA not doing their job, the vehicle on track wins hands down every single day of the week. No, no problems, no questions asked. So I can see why so many people voted for that. That whole debacle was, it doesn't feel real to be honest with you. It doesn't feel like it was something that actually happened after all the learnings, especially at the track where we so sadly uh, lost Jules Bianchi after a crash with uh, one of the recovery vehicles. There were so many levels to it. It wasn't just like, oh, you've made a mistake. It was, you haven't learned from your previous mistakes. It's at the same track. There were so many things to it, which upset a lot of people. Yeah, because we had that recovery vehicle on track in the Massey era. I want to say, was it Turkey, Turkey that came qualified. out? Yeah. But again, it it came out, cars were coming out on track and it was like, it was still appalling and it was really bad and we rightly kind of criticised it. But this was just 10 times worse and the fact that the cars were going past it, watching Gasly in particular, yes, he was going quicker, but he was you know, sticking to a delta time to re- recover back like, it just should never have been in that situation anyway for that to happen. Not only the vehicle as well, the the onboard of the marshal where he's moving science's car, why they needed to be there. And then it was a red flag all day long. I don't understand why it wasn't just immediately red flagged. The whole thing was a mess. People have voted it the most controversial moment of the year. And hopefully this will never happen again. The vehicle on track wins that award. Now we go to F1 driver of the year uh, and this is crowned through our abcdef1 driver ratings no surprise the f1 driver of the year goes to max verstappen let Should me get, get the trump out again <laughs> yeah get the cape on i mean you're wearing alpine so yeah screw the alpine. You're, not a, you're not a max fan right now he, he was too good even if ferrari had performed at a decent level with strategy and reliability they still wouldn't have been able to beat Max, in my opinion. I think if it was completely equal machinery, Max Verstappen would still come out on top against Leclerc. I think it would have been close. I think maybe we could go down to the, la- the last couple of races. But Verstappen was on another level. We talk about it a lot in all of our watch-alongs and all of our podcasts, you know, how he's always on it straight away. You know, FP1, he's out there and he is a second, second and a half quicker than everybody else. He just gets it. He never has off days. Singapore was one in a million one, yeah the whole year um, i'd say he was sensational and we've, we've said you know years ago when max gets a championship winning car he's going to be a very scary prospect and <laughs> he is proving that that is the case boy is that happening yeah i mean uh, the only other mistake i can think of other than singapore is when he spun in hungary and he won that race after spinning phenomenal season scary how in a car that's Definitely the best the best car, no doubt, but not unbelievable dominance that we've seen in the past of like the peak of Mercedes or maybe Vettel's Red Bull for a couple of years uh, of his dominance or, you know, the McLaren uh, Honda days where they just were going to win every race regardless. The fact that, you know, Max Verstappen set the win record very close to doing it in percentage still, um, despite all those races, but uh, Shumi, Shumi Shumi defended that one. Come on, the lads. That's one of the only <laughs> records he has left. But oh, yeah, speaking, you know, speaking of Shumi, like we are seeing Max Verstappen very, in my opinion, he's becoming very similar to, to Michael Schumacher in terms of the way he's driving. And it doesn't matter if he's not on pole. Apparently, it doesn't matter if you, if he's 14th on the grid at Spa, he's still going to win. There's a lot of similarities, stuff. I think, between Verstappen and Schumacher. Not just that whole, doesn't matter if he's on pole, he's still going to be incredible in the race, but also having that tenacity, that willingness to sometimes go past where the rules allow uh, to yeah. try and make sure that he can get 
the the most points and especially i think in 2021 you can say that that was the case uh where he he very much tested the fia and and what they were willing to do um whether that's a good or bad thing you can decide um but definitely a lot of similarities there so well done max verstappen you win f1 driver of the year we now move on so the esports driver of the year goes to none other than lucas blakely Lucas, if you've watched F1 Esports, he came from not even being picked in the pro draft, then finally getting selected uh, in 2019, finished, I think, 15th in 2020 and, and so 2019 and 2020. Uh, and then eventually 2021, he started winning some races. And this year he won the F1 Esports uh, World Championship, won the Drivers' Championship. The step up from him has been absolutely incredible. He should be very, very proud of himself. The emotion that he showed after winning a race or in, in an interview or, or just when you talk to him off camera, you can tell how much it, mean, it means to him and how much it meant to him to win the driver's title. And I don't think there's anyone more deserving uh, than what that what Lucas has managed, you know, being signed to McLaren Shadow, having that completely new environment around him. You know, you're signed to a big Formula One team. You've got, you know, turning up to the McLaren Technology Center every day and, and training there. And that must be daunting in itself. But he managed oh, yeah. to hold on. Uh, he had the the greats of Rasmus and Otmir, et cetera, chasing him down at the end, but he held on. There was a moment, I think, in uh, Brazil where he it was the penultimate race of the year and he bounced back after getting caught over the last rounds before that penultimate round of the year he had to win or get some sort of uh, decent result and he absolutely smashed it so well done lucas you win that emotion was incredible uh as he as he crossed the line they, they put so much effort into these things i mean even just as a casual gamer like i'm absolutely awful at f1 games i don't know how much like when i used to practice a lot you're still absolutely nowhere near so that it just shows what level they have to be on you, you can't just go like oh I can't really be bothered to play today. Like you've got to be improving like all the time and stuff. So yeah, impressive stuff. The thing that's most uh, impressive about it is not necessarily being really good at the game because there are clearly plenty of drivers that are really good at the game, but it's having that mentality to turn up when the lights are on you, the cameras are on you, three quarters of a million dollars on the line and to yeah. perform and, and do no mistakes during a race because one mistake and you miss out on q1 or q2 like the the gaps in qualifying is oh yeah i saw some of that outrageous i'm talking thousands of a second between the top four or five so yeah uh incredible stuff well done lucas okay we now move on to best moment of the year the big one the final award of this year the nominees are leclerc versus verstappen saudi battle for the win through goes Hamilton at Silverstone, Latifi Purple Sector in Hungary, and Kevin Magnussen's pole position in fourth position is Nicholas Latifi with 16% uh, of the vote. Well done. We should have done 20 nominees so it could have been 20. Come on. Uh, it was a great moment. Fair play to him. To be fair, he had a, he had a few, a few good moments, didn't he? Purple Hungary, Sector. Hungary he was his jam, free wasn't it? practice. He scored. I mean, to be fair, I would have, I would have put in this best moment of the year category him turning the wrong way at Suzuka, and I feel like that maybe would have got some more votes. But <laughs> either or, Latifi. Uh, to be fair, the, the split, of, the split of votes, <laughs> the split of votes uh, are quite, quite close actually. So, sixteen percent for Latifi in fourth position. In third place is Le, is the Leclerc versus Verstappen Saudi battle with twenty two percent of the vote. The runner up is through goes Hamilton with 30% of the vote. And the winner of best moment of the year goes to Kevin Magnussen and his pole position at Brazil with two more percent than through goes Hamilton with 32%. Well done to Kevin Magnussen on that one. Interesting. Two very different moments, I would say. Through goes Harry. Hamilton being... Of course, Sergio Perez and Leclerc fighting really hard, both pushing each other off the track. Hamilton just drove on, drove past them. Crofty, of course, added to that moment massively with that bit of commentary. Uh, and it's a lot of people's favourite moment, for sure. But I guess from a sporting perspective, Kevin Magnussen in a Haas, getting pole position after the year they had last year. It was very fitting. And I think for me, yeah, definitely the best moment of the year. You've got to think, Magnussen getting pole... If you go right back to the start of the year and the first test, you'd be like, 
wait, Magnuson's driving because he wasn't even he wasn't even on the grid, um, and it was only because of Mazepin losing his seat and that whole Haas debacle that. Kevin Magnussen returned. I think what makes that moment so incredible, and it's kind of, it's almost like good and bad, because if you think it's sad that we, this year in particular, more than any moment, we didn't see anywhere near enough underdog moments. You know, you didn't get a single midfield driver on the podium apart from Lando once right at the start of the year. And you had no idea that we'd go through a whole year where you don't really get any of these moments. You don't get like, a knock on winning for Alpine or, you know, like an Aston Martin on the podium or something like that. We didn't get anything like that. So when near the end of the year, you thought season's wrapped up, we're not going to get much here. It's a sprint race. So we had Quali on the Friday. And the fact that Magnussen, yes, he, he was fortunate, no doubt, but he got into Q3 and put the lap in that he needed, got to end the pit lane. And let's not forget, he put that lap in. There were other cars on the track. Yes, it got it got wetter and stuff, but unbelievable. And a Haas, I think we said this during the watch along, only I'd say probably Latifi getting pole would have been more of a like, oh my God moment because Haas, let's be honest, with the greatest of respect, they've not, they've not had a real standout moment. You know, they've still not got a podium or anything like that. So for them to get a pole position, it was just, yeah, magical moment. It was it was just such a feel-good moment that you just love about F1 when you get an underdog story like that. Kevin Magnussen wins best moment of the year. Yes. Now, one more award, uh, which uh, isn't in the sheet, goes to, or is, uh, we're going to announce it, best dog of the year. Uh, because uh, you can see that he has announced himself onto <laughs> the, uh, the live stream. Uh, if you hold him up slightly, there he is. Uh, it's of course going to have to go to Frank Specklebottom, who, you know, not only is he a great dog, uh, he's brought many yawns to the watch yes. alongs, uh, many Twitch watch along yawns, uh, you know, predicting a lot of the future, a lot of it being wrong. I, I won't lie to you, Frank. Uh, also, I'm hoping maybe for next year you just just stop being so soppy. Uh, I think that would be a that would be a good start, wouldn't it, Frank? He still wins best dog of the year. Roscoe robbed, someone said in the comments. Roscoe has been well and truly robbed, but how many yawns has he delivered us on this uh, WTF1 uh, podcast? But um, look at him. That is the end of the uh, WTF1 awards for this year. My final thoughts are thanks to everyone that, I mean, this year more than ever, you know, people experiencing it with us because we've been doing so many Twitch watch-alongs and things and we've been there with you witnessing those moments like Kevin Magnus and Pole or Through Goes Hamilton as we heard it five minutes down the road uh, before it happened <laughs> as we were sat in a room outside of Silverstone. So yeah, I will say thank you everyone that joined us this season for all these amazing moments and living f1 with us f1 nerds that's exactly it right it's it is living these these moments with you all whether it's live on twitch whether it's on our through our podcast whether it's through our youtube videos or social media or whatever it's uh, it's been awesome it's not been a vintage year if it was a bottle of wine it's something you'd crack out if you had some people over you know what i mean like you know you'd, you'd pour it out you don't really care about the wine on. too much but you go oh so that's it tastes all right you know but it's not you get the cape on uh, it, it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't anything um, to, to shout home about I think 2022 but 2023 is where the Ferrari hype train comes back is it? it's where yep I can already okay. hear the choo-chooing in the distance and it's not the even sir, masterclass. Um, and also I want to shout out to, to those that sent over pictures to me from uh, listening to this podcast I absolutely love seeing all of them I'm pretty much liking every single one I see come through someone's like they're doing their driveway and it's snowy and they're like oh, I'm just listening to the podcast another one's in a field somewhere like yeah, it's I just that guy in the tracks are in Australia or something yeah it's, it's unbelievable yeah, so love, please do that. please do send, keep sending those in because I absolutely love seeing them uh, at Matty WTF1 or at Tommy WTF1 on Twitter that's probably the easiest way to send them in and thank you again for all the support you've given this podcast this Twitch channel everything else uh, over the year it's been amazing maybe the last podcast of the year so in that case I want to wish you a very happy new year I hope you had a good Christmas and uh, we will see you for 2023 as well as Frank's getting stuck in the wire <laughs> lovely stuff anything else from you Tommy yeah I I will echo that, those thoughts about the podcast and the amazing support on the podcast this year has been unbelievable uh you know we've done done a lot more podcasts this year and really enjoyed uh and doing them so yeah thanks for listening to my awful opinions that make me wear and buy alpine merchandise i will see you very soon bye, bye.